coming up today on Keys to Kingdom Living. So God says, I'm not going to give you something that's going to destroy you. So I'm going to kill you first. I'm going to plant you. You're going to think you're dying, but I'm going to develop character, and the character is not for now. You don't need all that character when you're broke, busted, disgusted, and nobody listens to you. So you're going through torment now for the glory that's about to be revealed. Welcome to the program. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery, coming to you from the World Harvest North Sanctuary located in the beautiful North Georgia mountains of Blairsville. We're so delighted you've joined us and bringing you a brand new word. It's entitled Increase. Everything about God that's on his mind for you is increase. We must not allow the thief that Jesus talked about in John chapter 10 to, through our own abdication of authority, our own disobedience, to cause him to kill, steal, and destroy the blessings that God wants to load us literally daily down with. Get out the word of God. Go with me and let's hear this message on increase. It will build your faith. Abraham tells Isaac, says, God himself will provide the lamb. And he calls the mountain where he, he did that. He says, and this is where God will see to it. He will provide for us. Now, because we're created in the image and the likeness of God, God has given us the ability to see things before it's time for them to be manifested. And he does this with eyes of faith. Isn't that interesting? How many has seen and known things before they happen? Look at this. See, this attests to what I'm talking about as being not only uh, truth, but is factual. Uh, God shows us things in advance. God showed us when we were called to be pastors of this church what this, this church would do and, and the function and the uh, purpose that we would feel and, and how God would use this through television to reach the nations of the world. And, and s almost 17 years later, we're doing that. And so God gives us eyes of faith. You need those. These here will get in your way because we're to walk by faith and not by sight. Because as Christians, you can go through some stuff and you think, I'll never come out of this. So you've got to have eyes of faith that sees beyond your problems of today. Now, look there in Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians 3, begin with me at uh, verse 14. For this reason, Paul says, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family is in heaven and earth is named, that he would grant you. Now, he's, he's praying that God would grant to, to the believers there at Ephesus and also unto us who are also in Christ. He's praying that God would grant to us, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through the, his Holy Spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in our hearts through faith and that you being rooted and grounded in love. See, we've got to get planted as Christians, right? We've got to abide. We've got to stay where he puts us. That we be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width, the length, and the depth, and the height, and to know the love of Christ which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. That's what the Holy Spirit gave Paul to pray over the, the believers, right? That we would be filled with all the fullness of God, not what our denomination believes in, but what God wants us to have, right? Now to him, God, who is able to do, he can exceed abundantly all that we are able to ask, think, or imagine. Think about that. See, God is not limited by our humanity, we limit God by our unbelief. So God has put faith in us and given us the ability through the eyes of faith to see things that are not in the natural. And so 
he operates on a different level than humanity does. We're in this world, but we're not of this world. We're, we're, we're uh, protected. We're in a cocoon, if you will. We're in Christ, and we're, we're shrouded around, encompassed by his presence, and he protects us from this world, right, so that we can accomplish his will, or Satan would have destroyed us long ago. Now, uh, he has given us the power to accomplish what even our minds and our hearts cannot even imagine as being possible. And he does that through the power that works in us. To him be glory in the church by Jesus Christ to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now, when it comes to God's desire for his children, he always has increase on his mind. You've got to believe that. If you don't believe that, I want to ask you why. Don't let your circumstances dictate your faith. Can I get a witness? If I let the, the circumstances that this ministry goes through from week to week, month to month, and year to year dictate my faith and how I believe in God, we would have shut up and, and left a long time ago. But God, if God be for us, who can be against us? So when something rolls up against us and says, no, we're going to defy you, we're going to tear down this ministry, we're going to shut it down, I go to God and say, God, what is, what's going on? And God says, be still, know that I am God, I'm with you, I'm for you, I'm going to turn this thing together for the good of the people why because if the church if the ministry does not go through things and be example to the 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 members of the congregation how are you going to know without example how to go through your stuff can i get a witness well i don't like going to that church because they go through stuff any church that you go to any fellowship that you go now there may be some self-righteous people out there that says i don't go through anything at any time and all they're doing is keeping it a secret but but we're here as parents you should be tangible and and, and approachable to your children and let them know in this world you're going to have afflictions in your marriage you're going to have some upsets you're going to have some problems as pastors you need to as jesus jesus went into his into the room where the disciples were hiding and he showed them his scars he didn't hide his scars from them. He showed the scars to them. Why? He says, you're going to have some problems, but look, I have took the pain out of the problems. I'm giving you victory and hope, and I'm letting you know there is going to be some problems in this life, but I am giving you the victory over them. So when problems come, let's not beat each other up because we're having a problem or a situation. Let us bear one another's burdens and fulfill the law of Christ. God wants us to increase. So don't let your circumstances, your situations dictate your outcome. Let your faith do it. I don't know how many testimonies are literally sitting in this house. Y'all should have already been under a tombstone. Been diagnosed with cancer, been diagnosed with heart disease, been diagnosed with everything under the sun, but you're still here. Give God praise. But God... He's given us the victory. It's our faith. And now what 1 John talks about? This is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. God began his word in Genesis 8 teaching us about the principle of seed, time, and harvest because he had increase on his mind. I want to increase you. Here's how you do it. Seed, time, and harvest. God does not have a problem with causing us to increase, and we shouldn't either. That's a hard, hard one to pull. I said we shouldn't either, but we do. Christians struggle with increase. Now, another term that we can use in the place of increase is growth. If we will remain rooted and grounded as Paul is praying in this word and writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, if we will remain as Christians rooted and grounded in God's love, then we will begin to comprehend the, the vastness of God's love for us. If we aren't planted in God's love and in his kingdom, then we can't grow or increase spiritually in our lives. 
This is a grave concern with ministers in this day and hour that we live in. People are so temperamental. Here today, gone tomorrow. There's got to be consistency. Marriages failing over nothing. Where is the commitment? Where is the dedication? Where is that, that long-suffering that Jesus showed us by example that we're supposed to operate under? Huh? Without these things, without these fruits of the Spirit, long-suffering, forbearance, meekness, kindness, gentleness, love, temperance, without these things operating in our lives, how can we ever grow and become spiritually increased? Right? But if we will get planted in Christ, and if we will live by faith, then we can allow God's love and goodness to flow in and through us, through our spiritual roots. You're in Christ. That means you have your roots in him, not in the world. You're in the, the kingdom, not in the systems of this world. Not in the kingdoms of this world, right? And just like roots of a plant, which gathers nutrients from the ground, that feeds the plant, the, the roots are invisible to our eyes. Why? They're underground. But these roots give nutrients to the plant that you see so that there's growth and increase. We've got to, as Christians, have spiritual roots. Mom and Daddy gave us spiritual roots. Now, Paul teaches us in this chapter that as believers, we must learn to be stable in our faith walk, consistent in our relationship with Christ. It's a lifetime commitment and not an occasional date. You don't meet Jesus on harmony, e-harmony, or Christian mingle, you meet Jesus on your road to Damascus. And that is a lifetime, it is an eternal covenant. I was talking to Pastor Ligon the other night, and he had married uh, his son and, and daughter uh, a few months ago. I said, well, what kind of knot did you use? He said, I, I used a covenant knot. And so I thought I'd mess with him a little bit. And I looked at him. I said, well, I don't use that knot. He said, what do you use? I said, I use a slip knot so then get out of it. <laughs> that went over real well with him. <laughs> As we put down roots in God's word and allow his spirit to grow us up in Christ then his life will begin to flow through us. Right? But you've got to have those roots stay. Not here today, gone tomorrow. And as his life comes up through us, soon we will begin to show signs of life and growth outside us and to those that are around us. See the principle? The same applies to our knowledge of God and his love. We can't handle all that God has for us on the first date, if you will. So he will plant us in Christ, and he will watch to see how we handle waiting on him to while he fulfills both his will in our lives and his promises on our lives. Think about that. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on God's promises. What did Jesus tell the disciples after he rose from the dead? Go to Jerusalem and tarry there. Wait for the promise. See, we've got to abide in Christ while we're waiting on the promises, while we're waiting on the blessings, while we're waiting on the increase. That will come natural. What you've got to concern yourself about is abiding. Nothing's going to uproot me. Nothing's going to distract me. Nothing is going to cause me to forsake my covenant relationship with Christ. I'm going to abide come hell or high water because it's not me that's got me rooted. It's God that's got me rooted. And if he puts me in Christ, I'm there, right? So don't let the things of this world distract you and pull you out of where you need to be in Christ, right? Now, he watches over us and he keeps us while he is performing his good pleasure in us and as he is getting ready to bestow the promises on us. As we remain committed, submitted, and faithful to his plans for us, then God will begin to release new things and new growth into our spirit, man. It comes into our spirit because it's out of our spirit that we are to grow and to become the person that God has ordained for us to be. It comes out of your spirit. 
It's not by works. So it's got to come out of your spirit. Now, turn with me to Romans 5, please. Let's take it a little bit deeper. Verse 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, there's that word again, faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So now our, our faith introduces us to God's grace, and God's grace gives us the ability to stand when other times we would fall, right? But not only are we standing by grace in this faith in Christ, but we're rejoicing in the hope of the glory. See, the hope of the glory means the glory has not come yet. We have hope that the glory is coming because we are being changed from faith to faith and what? Glory to glory into what? The image of Christ. So we're, we're rejoicing in hope in the glory of God. We don't see it yet, but we know it's coming. And we know it's coming because we're staying where God has planted us in Christ Jesus. We are walking by faith and not by sight. We are being obedient and submitted and committed to the word of God. So there is no if, ands, or buts. We know that it's when, not if, the glory comes. It's going to come. And when it does, others will know it, Right? Can you help me preach this this morning? God sent me with a word to inspire you. Don't accept the way situations are. There's a glory that's coming. If you're suffering right now, if you're facing destitution, if you're facing hardship, there is a glory that's coming because just as sure as you're planted in Christ Jesus, this affliction in your obedient faith is going to produce glory. Glory is coming. Increase is coming. Is he not a rewarder of those who diligently seek him? Yes, he is. He is a debtor to no man. Now, verse 2. Through whom also we have access to this grace to stand in the hope. Verse 3. Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. We, we're like weebles. We wobble, but we don't fall down. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Only God can put a good spin on tribulation. You go to everybody else, man, I'm going through a hard time. Yeah, you are. You look like death warmed over. What's happened to you, brother? You go to God and say, God, I'm going through a hard time. No, you're not. Look at how, how perseverance is developing in you while you're going through this. I don't want to talk to you. I'm going to go talk to somebody else. <laughs> Not only that, but we also glory in tribulations, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance, here it comes. Perseverance produces character. Could it be that God allows us to go through tribulation and our faith be tried so that we will develop godly character? And character, watch this, character produces hope. Now, the reason so many people in the body of Christ give up on the promises of God because they have not allowed godly character to be de developed inside of them. God, help me preach this. Well, there ain't nothing to this but suffering. I'm just going to go back to the world. I didn't suffer out in the world. No, you were bound to hell with no hope. But now that you're in Christ, Satan's coming against you, and you think there's nothing to this, what it is is you've got to go through some stuff. Can I get a witness? You get married, you're going to go through some stuff. You're going to have some situations where y'all don't agree with each other. Can I get a witness? <laughs> One of y'all got to die. You better not kill them. That means die to self. We don't argue. You just hear us reasoning a mile away. Saw a guy here a while back a few years ago. I mean, his nose was black. His eyes were black up under here. I said, son, what happened to you? He says, it's my wife, my fire stick, and my, my, my business. <laughs> You're going to have some stuff, right? And, and, and that's when people want to jump ship, when you have problems. Well, I thought when I married you, you'd take care of all my problems. I'm trying, but you won't stand still long enough for me to kill that flesh in you. You're going to have stuff. What is that stuff going to do? It's going to forge y'all together. 
If you'll stand in the storm, you'll stand any time. Let it forge y'all in, into becoming one, not only with each other as husband and wife, not only one in congregation, but one in Christ with God. Let these storms that we're facing drive us into the safety of his high, the, the most high. Get under that shadow and abide in him. Because what that does, these tribulations, if we'll, we'll answer it by faith, this tribulation will develop character. When we start getting character, we will start having hope in this world when the trials come against us. Wait a minute. I've been here, done that. I know something good's about to come out of this situation. And it puts a hope in you. When you have a hope, you can outlast the storm. They did a research on rats. Put them in a barrel with water, covered over the barrel with a lid, no light. Came back a little while later, they were all dead. Put another barrel out with water, put the rodents in it, left a little bit of light shining through the crack on the top of the barrel. Came back a little while later when the others would have died, did die, these were still fighting. See, you don't give up if you don't have, if you have hope, you won't give up. And you've got to have hope because hope will cause you to go the extra mile. And it's that extra mile that is your breakthrough. I'm talking to somebody today. You're on the point of giving up. And God says, no, let this build character in you. And when you get that character, you will have hope. Hope will be the result of that character. And that hope will cause you to go that extra mile. And you will start seeing breakthrough after breakthrough. And once you get that, I mean, once you get the taste of breakthrough in your spirit, man, like a dog does blood, you won't give up. You'll have tenacity. Am I talking to you? You will be tenacious. Now, now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been uh, shed abroad or poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. Now, in these four verses, Paul's breaking down for us the process that all we believers must be willing to undergo. God must first develop us on the inside so that we can properly handle the increase on the outside. You give somebody that does not have the character to handle a lot of money, you give them a lot of money. You give somebody that, ha that does not have a lot of character a lot of authority, and it goes where? To their head. It messes with them. So God says, I'm not going to give you something that's going to destroy you. So I'm going to kill you first. I'm going to plant you. You're going to think you're dying, but I'm going to develop character, and the character is not for now. You don't need all that character when you're broke, busted, disgusted, and nobody listens to you. So you're going through torment now for the glory that's about to be revealed. Right? And you think, my God, we're not doing anything here. And Satan got us on his number one hit list. Why? God says, it's not about now. It's about where I'm taking you to. You will know what God's preparing you for, for the cross that he's given to you to bear. Right? Just helping you. Now, he develops this on the inside so we can handle the blessings outside. We cannot and must not allow God's blessings to become our idols. Got quiet there. So Paul has given us details of the maturation process, how God's going to choose to develop and mature us. Now, we know from Scripture that we've been planted in Christ. Romans talks about that. A seed that gets planted does not see daylight again. You've been planted in Christ. Am I ever going to see daylight? Am I ever going to see breakthrough? How many's ever gone through something? You think, what happened to me? I, I committed to Christ, and now all of a sudden it's like, lights out. You've been planted. You go through years. 
It's like, God, have I missed you? No, you've been planted. Unless you die and go, uh, a grain of wheat goes in the ground and dies, it abides alone. But if it dies, it's going to bring forth life and, and bear much fruit, right? We've been planted in Christ. Be sure and tune in next week at the same time on the same station because we're going to bring you the powerful conclusion of the increase. As this word goes on into uh, the, the depths of what the Holy Spirit was revealing in this sermon, you're going to have understanding from God's word about what God's will is for your life. Sometimes when we don't know specifics about what God wants for us and how he wants to bless us, the enemy can convince us through fears and doubts that God's not for us and he's definitely not going to take care of us whenever we're surrounded by troubles. That's why this word is so important and why we want you to get it in your spirit and hide it in your heart so that you can overcome any doubt, fear, or unbelief that the enemy may try to use to combat God's word from coming forth and manifesting in your life. As I get ready to leave you today, I want to encourage you. Many of you have been watching us for a great while on Roku. Uh, I wanted to encourage you, if you have downloaded the app, if you have a Roku device in your home and you have not yet downloaded the Keys to Kingdom Living app, please do so. And then if you have, and when you do download the Keys to Kingdom Living app, I want to ask you to please go on our site and will you please rate it and Please, if you could, do a five-star rating and write a review. Why I'm asking you to do this, it gives us an opportunity to be raised up so that it becomes more prominent, even more so than the secular apps on Roku, and it allows us more of opportunity to be visible so that people that are searching for the word hear it to hear the truth that may literally save and change their life, they will be able to connect with us more readily on Roku. So would you do that? I would greatly appreciate it. And, and uh, the message can get out uh, more frequently. And to God be the glory for that. Also, if uh, you're on Facebook or Twitter, please connect with me. The information is on the bottom of the screen. And uh, if you have any prayer requests, any praise reports of what God has done, we've been agreeing with you and standing with those that have called in and written in. Know that you're in our prayers and in our hearts, and we continually lift you up. Uh, send in your prayer request. The information is at the bottom of the screen. And then also, if you want to uh, take the next step from being a viewer and becoming a partner of this ministry, just a small seed would help us to get the message of the gospel out to the nations of the world. I just shared in our sanctuary how God has, through 2017, just in one outlet, which is lightcast.com, we are on there. Our video goes out. It has gone out over 100 nations in 2017. To God be all the glory. See, God is doing great things, and you can be a part of that. Won't you prayerfully consider standing with us? So until this time next week, keep looking up. Christ will return. Will we be ready? God bless you. We pray that you've been impacted by today's message. If you need more information or would like to contact us, visit us on our website at whcnorth.org or contact us by phone at 706-374-6175. To write us, our address is P.O. Box 968, Morganton, Georgia, 30560. Our campus is located at 135 Bud Franklin Drive, Blairsville, Georgia, 30512.